Are you tired of feeling tired, maybe gaining weight or getting hair loss or having your mood just tank? In a lot of cases, low T3 is the problem, but adding in more T3 from the outside may not be the solution. I'm here to tell you that it's possible to raise your T3 naturally. By the end of this video, you'll understand the root cause of the issue and get answers on where to look for real natural solutions that work. My name is Dr. Alan Christensen. I'm a board-certified naturopathic endocrinologist. For 30 years, I focused on natural thyroid care. Uh, here's the thing. You could be taking thyroid meds or making enough T4 naturally, but you can still feel awful. And the reason for that is your body might not be making enough of your thyroid hormones into active T3. This is something that your body adjusts in different ways, either by changing how much you make or how you use it at a level of the cells. And some of the symptoms from this can be many. All the classic symptoms we think about from hypothyroidism can occur when there's too little T3, even if your TSH is fine and you've got plenty of T4. So we can see things like I mentioned about the, the fatigue, the hair loss, you know, unexplained weight changes, mood changes, menstrual irregularities, digestive issues, and more. These can all happen from poor T3 formation. And here's the thing. Your body's cell receptors have specific switches that only get turned on when there's adequate amounts of T3 there. A little more about T3. So this is one of many thyronamines. Those are biologically active thyroid proteins. Now, the three is just number of iodine atoms. And 4C4 has one more iodine atom. We've also got reverse T3, which is still three iodine atoms, but they're in a different configuration than they are from regular T3, like right hand, left hand. There's also T2, which is one fewer and a whole different structure. And there's many other active thyronamines as well. So T3, it is an important one. But it's not the only important one. It's not really all that special, but there are many times in which there is too little of it. I hear it oftentimes talked about as the only one that matters, T4 doesn't matter, and the body needs all of them. They're all important in different ways. So where does T3 come from? Well, when the body is working on itself, it releases thyroid hormones from the thyroid into the bloodstream, and the TSH signal makes it happen. Now, most of what we make is T4, and that varies, but it's probably between about like 80 to 90% of what we produce is just T4. The rest is T3. So the thyroid makes T4 and T3. All those other thyronamines I mentioned, they're all, besides T4 and T3, they're all made outside the thyroid. And there's a lot of mechanisms for this that I'll touch on. So where does the T3 come from? Most of the T3 your body uses doesn't come from your thyroid. That's the, that's the thing. It's not something your thyroid produces. 80% or more of it is made outside of your thyroid. And most of that happens inside the liver. Now, what happens is that your body can control how much hormone you release from the thyroid, and you can control how much hormone you activate in your liver. And think about it like, I don't know, like steering a big ship or steering a go-kart. <laughs> so your body can't rapidly control how much hormone your thyroid makes. This is like an assembly line. It takes a long time for things to go from one end to the other. So it's about a three-month process. When your body senses, hey, I'm going to need more overall, it throws the lever, and about three months later, there's a little more hormone that comes out in response to that. Now, that's fine, but there's many situations in which your needs can change much more quickly than that. And not only your overall needs, but your localized needs. The way thyroid hormones work in your brain or your kidneys or your heart or your muscle tissue is not the same where it's working somewhere else. There's a distinct role to play in all these areas. Think of it like local government. And so this goes back to the go-kart thing. You've got to be able to turn on a dime when suddenly your liver needs more T3 or less T4 or vice versa. And that whole three-month thing during the big shift, that won't cut it. So we've got localized control. We've got mechanisms for regulating that. And if those things don't work right, that's when these symptoms show up. Now, the, the truth is that too little T3 can correlate with these symptoms, but the misunderstanding is that the best answer is always putting more T3 in the system. That's like throwing a whole lot of levers on the ship way to one side. It will make changes, but you're really taking away the body's short-term control. So the real solution is to give the body more short-term control. Now, a paradox is that when you're taking T3 or any thyroid hormone that you don't need, 
there can be obvious side effects of taking way too much racing heart, tremors, jitters, those things. But big but here for many people, the side effects they get are the exact side effects you would expect from lacking in thyroid hormone. You heard that right. And there have been studies done on this specifically for body weight. So people who are being unnecessarily medicated or over medicated, they're more likely to have significant body weight gain than those who are under medicated. No kidding. Studies have shown this. In fact, just last week, um, someone I was speaking to, her big puzzle was she's been on thyroid meds for quite some time and, you know, reasonably working well. She was quite involved with yoga and fitness and health. She's now 70 and she's always maintained her weight. But about two years ago, she could not. And she couldn't really unpack why that changed, how that was different. And after quite a lengthy discussion about many factors, like, oh, well, yeah, by the way, that was right about when the doctor added in a high amount of T3. I'm like, okay. And it really wasn't so much the problem of T3 per se, it was just extra medication. And she and her doctor assumed that that couldn't possibly have been the reason for her weight gain, because if anything, that should have made her lose more weight. And it can happen, but for many people, if they're taking medicine they don't need, T3 or not, their bodies resist that. And so what's happening now is you're digging in your heels and you're fighting the effects of thyroid hormone. Your metabolism is slowed down even further. And that was exactly when her weight started going up. And yeah, studies have shown this. I've seen this countless of times. So what's the real answer in a situation like this? Well, the trick is to help your liver. You know, your body knows best. And you want to be able to help your body raise T3 and regulate it naturally. So we think about some general factors, some general lifestyle factors that I'll mention. There's also some really good data about nutraceuticals. So vitamins, herbs, amino acids, minerals, making a big difference for healthy liver conversion of thyroid hormones. Some general friendly lifestyle factors. So keeping your blood sugar steady and even. Now, cortisol, your adrenal stress hormone, is regulating your blood sugar. They're kind of on a seesaw. If your blood sugar tanks, you've got to make a lot of cortisol to raise it back up again. Now, cortisol is also a factor changing how permeable your cells are to T3, how easily T3 can get across your cell membranes. So when cortisol is being made in the wrong amounts, your body can't use T3 as well. So blood sugar is a big connection that way. Also relevant to cortisol, we think about sleep patterns. You know, not even as much total sleep, but consistent wake times. So yeah, your number one step for helping your body with T3 is having a regular wake time, waking up at the same time. There's also some good data about dietary carbohydrate being important. Now, we don't need to you know, live on Twinkies and Wonder Bread to make this happen, but if we are extremely low carb, you know, ketogenic, one of the negatives is our body will make a starvation response that lowers T3 pretty dramatically. There's strong evidence behind that. It's probably somewhere around 70 or less grams of carbohydrate per day. So the more you get below there, the more that could be the thing blocking your T3 conversion. Now, I mentioned nutraceuticals, so good data. Here's some of the top ones. We have evidence about selenium and zinc, and they're relevant to a group of enzymes. There's a group of enzymes called D-iodinase, so D-iodine. They're, they're removing iodine. Making thyroid hormones is adding iodine, so going from zero up to you know, one, two, three, four, T4, T3, and then converting and using them is removing the iodine, and that's done by D-iodinase enzymes. A lot of things are important for them, but selenium and zinc are big ones, and it's not uncommon to be lacking in these. There's also evidence selenium is kind of a, I don't know, works in multiple good ways. Even apart from correcting a selenium deficiency, selenium supplementation can help the body do a better job making T3 and converting it. Now, there's data, too, about also certain compounds from plants. Uh, curcumin from turmeric, good data about that being a benefit to the gut role here. So the gut is a reservoir for thyroid hormones, and in many cases, it's storing them in an inactive state. Healthy amounts of certain phytonutrients can better allow the gut to regulate the conversion of T3 out of these stored hormones.
Uh, another fun thing is D-limonene. You might guess in the name, this is a citrus uh, phytonutrient. It is. And this is specific for benefiting certain liver detox pathways that are also involved in thyroid hormone regulation. One more cool one, elagic acid. This is from pomegranates. I love pomegranates. You know, the juice, the little arils, you know, little pips, the seeds, they're, they're awesome. Uh, so this, this decreases specific types of inflammation that inhibit this thyroid hormone activation. These are all things we can find in foods. They can be taken separately. I spent a bunch of time looking at medical literature on things like this that help the body with converting thyroid hormones and activating them and finding all the ones that had high quality human double blind placebo controlled studies. I put those together and made a blend called T2 T3 converter. So the T2 part of this, when we make T4 into T3, we're also going to make some into reverse T3. And that's okay. We need reverse T3. Reverse T3, we make into T2. And T2 helps a lot with overall rate of burning fat and also helps a lot with liver function, especially for T3. So the trick is you want to take your thyroid hormones and make T2 and T3 out of them effectively. And T2, T3 converter is just made for that. And the trick was just that I took all the studies of things that worked and took those things in those amounts and put them together and made it into capsule form. Um, easy thing. Basically, this is two capsules taken once a day with food. Want to be taken about 60 minutes before thyroid meds. If you are on tyrosine, either the solution or the gel caps, then it's actually just 15 minutes. You've got less of a time window. And you want to think about a 30-day time frame in watching for changes in T3 levels and T3 symptoms. So give that a little bit of time and watch for those things to shift. You can see measurable changes in the blood levels. So remember, trying to steer the ship with more medicine or different medicine, changing the types, it often backfires. You can actually cause the exact same symptoms when that's not what you need. Uh, there are totally times for T3-based medication, but so often than not, if someone's on a reasonable amount of any medication, but it's not working well, if they need the medication truly, it's often not a matter of just cranking it up or changing the type. It's much more often a matter of helping the body use it better. And that's the thing. Those who make their own thyroid hormone, they've still got to convert it. They've still got to utilize it. They've got to do well with it. And everyone can. It's a matter of just helping when it's needed the more so. The key here is helping your body do a better job at what it already knows how to do. Keeping your blood sugar dialed in, getting good sleep, considering some helpful nutraceuticals. These can make a big difference in how you convert T4 into T3 and how you feel better, how you get a better metabolic rate, healthier hair, you know, better rate of overall cognitive function and well-being in general. So the basic idea here is to raise it naturally, stop chasing the meds, help your body heal better naturally. If you want to go deeper into the science, I've linked a blog in the description below and my T2 T3 converter is also linked below. If you found this helpful, I think you'll also enjoy uh, this video here in which I talk about what happens when TSH is too low.